Place has a feeling of an ancient ruin, you know, on the edge of the ocean. Part of the mystique is that it's kind of hard to find. When you're walking out there, you don't see anything really. There's, it's because everything is below grade from the top of the jetties, so that when you walk out, it just looks flat out there. And finally, you get there, and you see these stairs, and these stairs that go down six to eight feet into what does look like a ruin. So there's this surprise that it's, you're even surprised that it's there in the first place, but then the stonework suggests a ruin as well. It's very romantic. You're out in the middle of the bay, but you're, you're not really on dry land. It's sort of a tenuous place. So that's what makes, makes it interesting to me. The edge between solid ground, or solid land, and the water. And I think edges are where interesting things happen. The day that I arrived in San Francisco in 1970, and I can take give you that date, it was June 10th, I came to the Exploratorium. The afternoon I decided to go for a walk and I ended up out on the end of the jetty. And so I've been there ever since. Having grown up in Colorado and in the mountains, I uh, had a strong connection with, with that kind of a environment. And of course, this place is different. As I began trying to develop a connection with the Bay region, I got interested in the Bay itself. That seemed like my new wilderness rather than the mountains, it was the Bay. In particular, I was interested in tides. The nature of the sound is, uh, is a function of the relationship of the Earth to the Moon, and that, of course, affects the tides, but it's also the Earth and the Moon to the Sun, which is, affects the weather and the seasons. The wave organ is a, an assemblage of, uh, of material, some of which was found on the site itself and some that we brought in. My collaborator on this project was George Gonzalez. George is a, an artist and a stonemason. Some of the stone out there came from a uh, cemetery that had been bulldozed in the 50s. The other stone comes from uh, the city. They're recycled curbstones. Before, it was, it was a place for fishermen and uh, maybe uh, people who like to explore like me, but it wasn't an inviting place for the general public. But now it is, I think, it, and the wave organ itself kind of provides a platform for human experiences, I would say. Certainly the music of the wave organ itself is a part of it, but it's as much about being there and being comfortable and being able to do whatever you want to do. If I give myself five minutes, I find that my, my blood pressure kind of drops and my hearing becomes more acute, and I, and I just become a part of the soundscape, I would say. And certainly the sounds of the wave organ are a part of it, but it's, it's also the ambient sounds as well. It's sort of like your body and your psyche just sort of relaxes and fits in to what's there. Families go out for picnics. Kids love to climb around on the, on the stonework. Uh, Fishermen use the terraces as launching pads for their fishing. Um, kids go out there at night and party. It's, it's used 24 hours a day. I always thought of it as a contemplative place myself. There's more to the wave organ than, than just the sounds that the pipes are creating. It's, it's a mixture of those melodic sounds, but overlaid by the ambient sounds. It's the sounds of the environment. It's the symphony. The wave organ is just uh, sort of an accompaniment or a punctuation. And the theater unfolds right there in front of you. Ooh, yeah.